Kapit Bahay, it's your Kapit Bahay Pia Riri and welcome to my channel! Welcome, hello if you're new here, my name is Pia Riri. I am 25 years old and I love traveling. For the past 4 years, I think I had my fair share of traveling. I traveled with family, with friends, alone, with strangers, with loved ones. And I'm really confident to say na lahat ng travels na yon ay naging masaya, successful. But nung mga times na nagsisimula pala ako mag-travel, 2014 straight out of college, ito yung mga time na nangangapa pa ako, tinitingnan ko paano ba talaga mag-travel, naghahanap ako ng tips online kung paano mag-travel alone, mag-travel with friends, paano gawa ng itinerary. And those few travels, ito yung mga times na syempre nagkakaroon tayo ng maraming error, meron mga tayong mga lapses, may mga mistakes tayong na-experience, and I'm really happy. I'm really proud to say na out of all those mistakes, error, lapses, natuto na ako. And today, today in this video, I'm gonna share with you my travel tips for first-time travelers or beginners. First tip is to research and plan. Kasi when you research, you get to have a view of what to expect. Yung attractions, culture, food, mode of transportation, and a lot more. One of the easiest way to search for itinerary is, kunwari, pupunta ka ng Hong Kong for 3 days, i-type mo lang sa Google ay 3D 2N Hong Kong itinerary or 3 days, 2 nights Hong Kong itinerary. Or you can also check what to do in Hong Kong or things to do in Hong Kong. And marami nang lalabas doon. And from there, magkakaroon ka ng idea what the usual tourist attractions are and what the not usual tourist attractions are. Siyempre, when you research also, nag-research ka din kung magkano yung budget na dapat mong dalhin, di ba? And when you research, dun sa mga itineraries na usually lalabas, especially, especially if DIY and Filipino yung um, author ng itinerary, usually may budget breakdown. That's why I love Filipino travelers. Lahat sila nag-share ng stories and ng budget. Tapos, ito naman, when you plan beforehand, yung time mo is well spent on your travel. Hindi yung during nandun ka sa lugar na destination mo, tsaka ka pala nag-research. Sayang yung oras kasi misa na nga lang tayo nandun. Let's make the most out of it. My second tip is Google Maps is your best friend. If magta-travel ka DIY abroad, Google Maps is the best navigation tool I can possibly recommend. Yes, yung ibang country meron silang apps for their different subways, for their buses. Pero the difference kasi with Google Maps is it can capture all transportation including your walking. Minsan kasi yung apps ng per country solely lang siya for the train or for the bus. Pero si Google Maps na lalagay niya yung combination or kung gusto mo mag-train lang, kung gusto mo ng combination of walking and kung ano mode of transportation yung gusto mo. Kapag first time mo nagagamitan yung Google Maps, I strongly suggest na itry mo muna to sa bahay bago ka pumunta dun sa destination mo para nakakapa mo kung paano siya nag-work. Tapos, ilalagay mo yung destination and yung location mo as yung mga pupuntahan mo dun sa country of destination mo. Let's say, pupunta ka ng Hong Kong Disneyland, manggagaling ka ng airport. So, paano pumunta from there to there? My tip number three is, DIY isn't always the best idea. I know na medyo mas lagi tayo nakakatipid kapag DIY. But if merong mga attraction na let's say 1 to 2 hours away from the city. Kunwari, Japan, there's Mount Fuji. Vietnam, Halong Bay. Or kunwari, merong attraction na 1 to 2 hours away from the city. Pero magkakasama or madaming sila na tabi-tabi. For example, sa South Korea. Nami Island and Petty France or sa Taipei na Jufen and Shifen. Yun, magkakasama yun into one place. Yes, there is a way that you can DIY but I recommend that you try guided tours from Klook or KKD. Bakit? Kasi on these tours, you don't worry about transportation. Minsan kasi, kapag nag-DIY tayo, sobrang hindi ka absolute or hindi tayo sure dun sa transportation. Minsan, mag tayo. Minsan, magta-transfer pa tayo. Parang instead na Yung time na yun, eh sana binabiyahe na lang natin direct dun sa lugar na yun if we book the guided. Minsan, nag-aantay pa tayo ng matagal. Although, syempre, ang negative lang sa mga guided tours is limited yung time mo. Hindi mo hawak yung oras mo dun sa mga lugar na gusto mong puntahan. Pero syempre, I think naman na pag nandun ka na, dun ka na mag-strategize kung ano yung gusto mong i-prioritize. <laughs> Tagal ko yun 
My tip number four is always bring US dollars when traveling abroad. For the sole reason na mas mababa kasi ang peso compared sa dollar when you exchange it outside. For example, mag-travel tayo sa Bangkok. Here is an example of the exchange rate from an exchange counter in Bangkok. Meron ako yung ng visuals para sa inyo. Dahil hindi ako ganun kagaling mag-edit. Sinulat ko na lang. Meron tayong 10,000 pesos. Tapos, ang exchange rate ng BAT doon for peso is 52. Kapag pinapalit natin ang 10,000 pesos natin, magkakaroon tayo ng 5,200 BAT. But, if we have 10,000 pesos and pinapalit natin yung 10,000 pesos natin to US dollars dito sa Pilipinas, let's say, mabibili mo yung dollar ng 55 per 55 pesos for 1 dollar. Medyo mataas yan kasi sabihin na natin na mataas talaga exchange rate madalas. So, 10,000 pesos mo, i-divide mo sa 55 for US dollars, makakakuha ka ng one, roughly 181 US dollars. Kasi minsan yung butan na yan, or wala naman kasi silang mga penny sa exchange counter, hindi na nalang ibibigay sa'yo. Sabihin na lang natin na 180 yung makukuha mo. So now, ang exchange rate ng dollar sa bat ay... 33.54 So, ang 180 mo, multiply mo sa 33.54 ay 6,037.20 pat. Now, let's compare. Ang peso mo na direct mong ipinapalit sa Bangkok ay naging 5,200 baht. However, ang iyong peso na pinapalit mo sa dollar dito sa Pilipinas, muna, tapos pinapalit mo lang from dollar to baht, ay naging 6,037. So, roughly 800 baht. Sayang naman yun yung pwede mo sana pang kain, di ba? Or pang shopping. Kahit mas bumaba or tumaas yung exchange rate, roughly naglalaro lang din naman dun. Pero, kapag lumakas na yung peso, hopefully, maging ganun na kalaki yung palitan natin. But for now, let's just be safe and bring US dollars instead of Philippine peso. My tip number five is to bring enough cash, bring your ATM, card and bring your credit card. May mga times kasi na, wag naman natin i-wish. Pero may mga times na hindi inaasahan na magkakaroon ng emergency or maubusan tayo ng pera. Most of the countries naman na ngayon, kahit yung mga third world countries, may mga ATM na sila na pwede ka mag-withdraw basta may MasterCard or Visa yung na-chip yung card mo. And then, kapag alam mo na mauubusan ka na ng pera, tapos may credit card ka or may debit card ka, usually, yun muna itry mo ipambayad sa mga establishment kapag nag-aalangan na para yung cash mo na lang is for emergency talaga or yung mga kailangan bayaran ng cash na lang. Tip number six. 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 <laughs> Double check everything before you leave your house. Kung pwede mong i-triple check, i-triple check mo. Especially yung mga kailangan mo. Passport, pera, hotel booking, pambahay, underwear, double check, triple check if possible. Better if makakagawa ka ng checklist bago ka umalis. My tip number 7 is be early at the airport. If you're traveling na international, be at the airport at least 4 hours before your departure time. I know, I know, I know na medyo OA yung 4 hours but minsan kasi sa airport, yung papasok mo pa lang ng mismo airport, mahaba na yung pila. Pag magbabayad ka ng travel tax, mahaba rin yung pila. Pag mag-check-in ka, mahaba rin yung pila. Sa immigration, mahaba din yung pila. And the least we want to happen is, malas call ka or maiwan ka ng aeroplano dahil lang, dahil sa haba ng pila. Bukod pala sa pagiging early, one thing na pwede mo rin gawin ay mag-online check-in. Kasi kapag naka-online check-in ka, usually with Cebu Pacific, iba yung pila ng mga naka-online check-in na compared dun sa mga hindi na online check-in. So, malay mo, mas may yung pila no mga na online check-in. <laughs> tip number eight. <laughs> my tip number eight is, when choosing a hotel, choose a hotel near the city or near the attraction. Bakit? <laughs> Bakit? Because it saves you time. Hindi naman lingid sa kaalaman natin na minsan yung mga hotel na malapit sa city or sa attraction ay medyo mahal compared dun sa malalayo. But, syempre, sayang naman yung time natin if na-spend lang natin siya when traveling, compared to if nandun na tayo sa malapit, na pwede naman nating spend dun sa mismong attraction. And, syempre, kapag malayo pang gagalingan mo, minsan, mas mahal din yung fare, ba? Compared kapag nandun ka na sa malapit, 
oh, mas nakamahal ka nga ng kaunti sa hotel. Pero syempre, yung fare mo is mas maliit. Or minsan walking distance kung ikaw ay sinaswerte. Tip number nine! Tip number nine is to take good care of your belongings. Lalo na kapag nasa ibang bansa ka, secure mo lagi. Syempre, dun ka maglalagay ng gamit mo sa secret spot sa bag mo. Or kung merong excess zipper dun sa loob ng bag mo, dun na lang sa pinakaloob. At kung lalabas ka ng hotel, kapag may lock yung gamit mo, ilock mo rin siya bago ka umalis. Huwag tayo magpakampante na niiwan lang natin kung saan-saan yung gamit natin. Especially if merong valuables. Okay? My tip number 10 is to stay connected. Rent a pocket wifi or bumili ka ng SIM card as long as merong internet. I used to think na yung internet na yun, paka-update ko lang ng Instagram story or makakapag-upload ako ng IG post ko real time or makakausap ko yung magulang ko kapag nasa na ako, inanap na ako. Pero, pero, ito yung naging crucial tool sa travel ko para maging successful siya na hindi ako nawawala lagi kasi tuwing gumagamit ako ng Google Maps, kailangan mo na internet. Hindi naman lahat ng bansa kasi may free internet or yung iba na merong free, may mga spots lang na may free. So, it's very important that you have your own para hindi ka nagre-rely sa iba. My tip number 11 is to eat before your flight. Especially kung darating ka sa destination mo ng gabi or madaling araw. Minsan, baka pagdating mo doon, gutom na gutom ka, wala nang open na kahit ano. Sayang naman, gutom na gutom ka. Or better yet, magbaon ka ng biscuit. Sky Flakes, Magic Flakes, ano pa ba yung mga biscuit? Nabisco, ganon. And my last tip is to enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Enjoy all of your travels. I know, syempre, minsan, baka may mga mistakes, may mga lapses. Pero at the end of the day, it's not every day na nandun tayo sa pupuntahan natin. Kaya please, 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 do enjoy and always be happy and always have safe and happy travels. This again has been your Kapit Bahay, Pia Ray Ray, and I hope you like this video. If you do, please give it a thumbs up. Thumb, thumb. If you do, please give it a thumbs up. If you like my content and want to watch more of something like this or my life or I don't know, we'll see what's coming next. Please do subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell button. Pin the 10 ang notification bell button kapag ako ay mag upload na, mao no notify ka again. And again, this has been your comment by Pierre and thank you so much for watching. Magluluto na ako ng tron kasi nagugutom na ako. So thank you so much. Maraming salamat again and see you next time. Bye bye.